Ladies and gentlemen, this is the fourth time I'm getting a chance to welcome a full house at this conference which deals with a very important subject, education. The patterns of education have changed over the centuries, but possibly nothing prepared us for the degree and extent of change in the last decade itself. We today have changed from the pattern of remembering and recalling through a repeat process of remembering and recalling knowledge to finding, selecting, having the discerning capacity of what is authentic, valuable, useful and applicable knowledge. Obviously this has demanded a paradigm shift. Such occasions like this are very important for all of you who have dedicated your lives and are committed to the process of education for a new generation. This morning we have a very important session with which we open today's uh, one day conference on the 21st century education challenges and opportunities. In the inaugural session we have a distinguished panel and I will take the opportunity now to introduce the panel members to you. First, Professor M. M. Pant, who really needs no introduction because many of you who have been here, who are here participating in today's conference have been in touch with him, for he is an internationally renowned expert specializing in pedagogy, technology and the development of tools and curricula for the 21st century education requirements. He has been known for developing working models that enhance the use of latest available technologies in pedagogy. He is especially noted for his efforts in leveraging social media for improving learning and bringing the mobile into the classroom where it has been traditionally banned. I'm sure it's been banned in many other parts or many other countries of the world, but quite definitely as a mother, I know that it has been it is banned in India. <laughs> his past roles include being the former Pro Vice Chancellor of the Indira Gandhi National Open University, which is a distinction of having probably one of the largest student bases in the world. And he has been on the faculty of the premium Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur. He has also served as visiting professor, University of Western Ontario in Canada. He has, hand, he has had hands-on experience at several European research centers and is the founder of the LMP Education Trust an organization that promotes new age learning and supports underprivileged learners. We also have with us today a very distinguished member uh, of the education uh, fraternity from the world. This is the Dean of the International Development at Cardiff Metropolitan University and council member at the Magna Carta Observatory Bologna. He is Dr. Mohammad Lutfi, um, who has had the experience of working in educational systems across a wide range of Arab countries as well as Western countries. He holds a BSc in Economics and Political Science, an MSc in Information Technology and a PhD in Systems Thinking. We welcome you, Dr. Lutfi. We also have with us as our guest of honor today, Mr. Bill Rannell, who is the former Minister of State for Innovation, Universities and Skills and presently Deputy Vice-Chancellor of the Plymouth University, UK. He is a graduate in French from Cardiff University and has built a successful career in public sector management. Between 1987 and 1997, he was the head of youth services with Basildon Council, the General Manager of King's College London Students' Union and General Manager of the University of London Union. He was elected as a Member of Parliament for Harlow in 1997 and spent eight years serving in government as Minister of State at the Foreign Office, where he was responsible for relations with North and Southeast Asia, as well as the Middle East, Minister of State for the Armed Forces and Minister of State for Further and Higher Education. In the latter role, he was responsible for implementing the current field regime and leading the Prime Minister's initiative for the globalization of higher education. He was appointed Deputy Vice-Chancellor at Plymouth University in February 2011 and is responsible for the student experience and internationalization. We welcome you, Mr. Ramon. Thank you very much for taking time out of busy schedules, all of you. 
both our panelists and our audience um, and guests. I will now request Professor M. M. Pant as the chair of this session to take over and present his opening remarks, as well as calling on our distinguished speakers for this session to speak thereafter. This is a session that's scheduled till 10 o'clock, after which we will have a coffee break and then prepare for the next one. I mentioned the time schedule only because I know this is a subject that has everybody getting so animated about it that we tend to forget the time. For the speakers, there's that clock right there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Emma Pan. <laughs> I must thank Dinesh Rama because he was blocking up the clock ago. <laughs> and just when the session starts, it's kind of moving. But we'll move on for a few more minutes. I think time schedules are meant to give an idea of what we're going to do, but it's the business at hand and which is what is very important. So let me first again welcome uh, all of you to take time out to be over here for the fourth such event. And it's very interesting because uh, as we reflect upon what it is all about, uh, when you say the term edu convex to anybody, what would you really think of? You think of this edu is education, and convex, your instant Pavlovian reflex is what? Conventions and expositions or exhibitions or something. But today, I would like to give the meaning edu convex to educational conversations and explorations. And that's what we are trying to do. We've not changed now from an exhibition and convention kind of a thing to conversations and explorations. And that is where this theme of 21st century learning really fits in. We in India got used to this expression as a buzzword because of Rajiv Gandhi who around 1985, 86, when he was in part of the computers and ICT and 21st century learning. And we still have the same notion that 21st century learning is something that we have to prepare for. Until, I went recently to a couple of schools, I'm sure the principals are here, uh, one school in Amritsar and one school in Ahmedabad, and I realized, so, if you're into school education, all your students are 21st century learners. They started going to school in the 21st century. So 21st century is not something that we have to prepare for. It is here and now, and the first decade almost gone. I think this is why we kind of chose this, and we are very happy that we have been able to organize this set of people that we have here, and in particular, Bill Remel. And why is very interesting is that he's a minister of innovation, has been. In India, you said the Minister of Innovation, nobody will understand that expression. But UK has gone ahead and tried to talk about a National Innovation Index, much like we watch the Sensex and the NASDAQ and Wall Street Index, we want to measure where are you on the innovation scale. ICT has a completely new meaning now. It's no longer information communication technology that was so early 21st century. We are now talking innovation, creativity, thinking. And I think this is the kind of thing that we are talking about and we are extremely happy that Bill Hamill has been able to find time, it was almost a last minute kind of an arrangement, but I think we are very, very happy that he is here and his influence will show in creating all this innovative stuff. And of course, grateful to the University of Cambridge, which has been a supporter for a long time, Cambridge ESOL has been a co-producer of the event and also supporting the English Language Championship for the second year, which has seen over 2,000 students participate. This is again something quite new that you're having. Winners will be awarded with tablets and smartphones this evening. So in the evening we have a function which we call Extra X Awards for everybody. 